Welcome back to another review. I'm going to take a look today at the Jetbeam EC26. This was sent in via the company for review. So usual unboxing and I'll have a quick chat about a few different things. The first thing to note with this particular torch is you will notice if you're into the torches that is that there is another torch out there which is very similar to this, the MSR D4 V2. I haven't used that particular one myself but it is pretty much identical in terms of the specs, so do bear that in mind. With that said, we'll move on to the torch and just have a look at that. It is quite a nice compact size, very typical jet beam finishing with a sort of gunmetal effect. There's your side switch there, which is a rubber material or silicone. Now my own thoughts on this are that I'm not that keen on it. The reason is that you can feel the switch underneath there for some reason. I think they could have made the cover a bit thicker or possibly have put a metal switch on there. Most of the jet beam torches I've looked at have that metal side switch. Other included items are the wrist strap. We'll move on to the LEDs now. Just have a single choice of emitters on this and there's four of them. Not sure what the auxiliary LEDs are, but I have done a little light demo later on for you. Just unscrew the tail cap now so I can show you that. We've got the thick O-ring on there and there's the contact point for the tail cap. You can actually remove the head on this, and I'll show you a picture of that later on. The included cell is a high drain one, and it's a lower capacity, 2,600 milliamp hour. You can use your own flat top cells, and you want to really go for, they say, a 12 amp, although I have found a 10 amp will work if you're not gonna increase the thermal temperature on the torch. Quick look on the inside there with the spring. Like I said, I will show you a picture of that later on, unscrewed. Stainless steel clip that they give you, you've got two positions with this, so you can have it facing up or down. It's pretty hard to lift that up because it's pretty strong, so there's not going to be any problems with that slipping out of your pocket or anything like that if you're using the clip. What I thought I'd do with the UI is show you the basic operation and then give you the diagrams and user guide for the advanced operation because really it would take quite a long time to show everything. As far as the main UI goes, the obvious choice is between the stepped or the ramping output. And personally, I'm finding myself using the stepped output because you get seven stages and then you have the turbo, so it gives a good distribution between the power levels. The ramping mode for me is a little bit on the fast side. It's quite tricky to get a very low output using that. It is possible to adjust the ceiling and the floor levels on the ramping mode though, so that might be worth investigating. There are some useful features though, such as the muggle mode, which will limit the output of the torch. So if you gave it to someone, maybe even a child or something like that, they wouldn't be able to activate the turbo, which does drain quite a lot of power. And it can also get quite hot if you increase the thermal temperature limit. You do have a lot of strobe modes on this torch and they're in two separate groups. Some of them are useful, such as the battery check and the normal strobe, beacon and things like that. And some of them I wouldn't use much myself, but they are there if you want to use them. Here's a look at the user guide. Feel free to pause that and you probably need to because it is quite an advanced torch in terms of the operation. I've also put the UI up there, the open source UI, so you can look at that for the programming. Quite a strong magnet on this once you put it in place. It's not that easy to move. Even on a slippery surface, it holds quite firmly. Onto the beam shots now. I've got my usual unicorn at 850 lumens. With the outputs on these, I have had to estimate it roughly because I didn't get very accurate figures off of jet beam. So don't take them as 100% accurate, but they should be pretty close to the actual output. Some of the numbers that they gave me made sense and some of them didn't, so I've sort of readjusted it to give you what I think the output is, comparing it to other torches that I have used. So a nice even spread with those seven power levels, and then we're up to the highest output. To get that, you'll need to increase the temperature on the default settings from 45 up to around about 65 degrees, but you are getting your 3,600 lumens at the top level. It does drop down pretty quickly though. At the 45 degrees, you will definitely feel the heat build up, although it doesn't get hot unless you keep hitting the turbo. If you increase it up to the 65, then you're really looking at something when you've got gloves on, otherwise it's just gonna to be too uncomfortable to hold. 
carry on with a few more shots now so do have a look at those and I'll give you my summary at the end. Some of my thoughts with the jet beam, I do like the small size on this particular torch, it's very pocket friendly. I do wish they'd maybe done a few different things, for example a choice of a neutral white emitter, that would have been nice. I know that the MSR has a lot of different emitters, would have been nice to have had a few on this. Another point to note is I'm not a big fan of the side switch, it's a decent click action, just feel that the cover could be better quality. On the other hand, you do have a lot of settings that you can tweak and adjust on this torch, so it's very customizable. As usual, if you've got any thoughts on this, do let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.